folks. No, what is this? This is not Curtis Connor's channel. I'm black. So welcome back to my channel. Before you even say anything, I know. I know, and I know how hard it must be, you know, waking up, looking for entertainment, and I haven't posted in too much. Like, I know. Like, I know I'm letting you guys down, and I, I know it's hard, and I know it's tough. But you're gonna have to be yes, I am hopeful for today. Um, today, what are we doing? So, on today's agenda is answering questions about how to survive boarding school. Early February, I posted on my Insta story. I asked, ask your questions about surviving boarding school and basically you guys responded with some questions and here they are. I'm gonna answer them. And yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoy this video. I haven't posted in a while. So this whole thing, it just feels a little weird. Like, you know, I just talking to you, it just feels a, a bit weird because you know, you are a bit weird as I am a bit weird. So two weird people together, weird plus weird. It just makes weirder. Toodles. <laughs> well, not really because you're gonna see me in the next clip. <laughs> I'm talking to I, no. Okay, so first question, do you have a specific schedule or planner that helps you stay organized and prepared? Yes, I do. Our school has this thing called OLS or online schedule. That's what it stands for. Um, so it's online. It's the schedule that is online. And yeah, it just shows you what classes you have, what time the classes are and your freeze throughout the day when lunch is basically an online schedule that's what it is and yes that's how i stay on schedule at school i think they also offer it um paper uh, but i only know a few people that use the paper version versus the online version okay what was the biggest change from public school to boarding school okay just so my education history education <laughs> like i'm literally a teenager still so there's not much but uh no yeah i was definitely in public school and then I was in charter school, like, all of, like, or was I in charter school my whole life? Okay, I was in, like, public charter schools, let's just call it that. Public charter, charter public, whatever. Now I'm in boarding school. I started that in ninth grade. Besides, like, living away from home, that's obviously a major change, living away from home, which has its pros and cons. But besides that, I think, oh, yeah, for sure, having people of different cultures and races that's one of the biggest things as well um going from public school to private school it also depends on what private school you have depending on the private school it could be an environment in which there's one like predominantly one race and it's like a like a really big to really small ratio while at boarding school specifically my boarding school although there are um some races or ethnicities that are more prominent like because my school is a pwi and it is in exeter new hampshire which is you know mostly white state whatever it is like pretty diverse so there's um a lot of different cultures different languages spoken different skin tones ethnic ethnicities races and that's that's really cool like about being at boarding school another major change would be being independent like okay i guess growing up i always took ownership of my own learning which i always had like had and still have this drive but at boarding school it's different why it's different at boarding school it's because you know obviously you're not living with your parents so you have to be extra independent you have more freedom definitely because you don't you don't necessarily have to ask your parents for everything because they're probably like in a whole different state or country and it just drives you to make your own decisions. There's another change I want to talk about. I just, I really can't remember. And I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay. So obviously getting into boarding school, it is a challenge. But it's not one of the, I guess, one of the greatest life challenges life is going to throw at you. But it is a challenge. And I noticed that the people that I interacted with, it could also be an age thing, although age is just a number and it doesn't define everything, but the people that I interacted with from public or charter school from where I grew up versus going to boarding school, they have a they have different mindsets. And what I mean by that is a lot of us at boarding schools are overachievers and that could be positive sometimes, that could be negative sometimes. We all have a drive and like we're all coming from places where we were the top students at our school, you know, 
the people like those students that, whatever but do you get what i'm trying to say we are in an, an environment where you're surrounded by people that actually love learning like that is something you know people at boarding school are not afraid to be like oh yeah I'm, i love learning like and they're not afraid to show that we love to learn learning not only has to do with academics but in other ways you're just surrounded by really talented creative people really smart individuals that um take their education seriously it's not like people in public or charter school didn't take their education education seriously but it was kind of like an obvious select few who cared more than other people not to say one is better than the other but it's definitely something i've noticed at boarding school that people care more about their education which is why they're here to better their education so not someone saying i'm at your school and i'm barely living no i, I feel you like sometimes sometimes it can feel like that especially when it's like finals like the last few weeks of the term and you're, you're just ready for it to be over and it's like wait can we hurry can we hurry this up okay. how did you social network so me personally i grew up kind of shy but like I always had this inner desire, like a strong desire to connect with people. And my middle school also, it was good in the sense that it really helped me step into being a public speaker. There was a lot of opportunities to speak and be able, be able to articulate myself um, and speak in front of crowds. And that definitely helped me build up my public speaking skills and stuff. Um, in terms of social networking, I always wanted to do that, although sometimes i was definitely shy and um, like an overthinker for example one time i was at walmart with my mom she wanted to get something she was like okay you can wait here in this little section for it was like for eyebrow waxing or like eyelash something something and so i saw these two kids they were like around my age i really i really i'm gonna tell you i really wanted to talk to them what okay so basically i was just watching them like okay not watching them but i was like you know watching them and i okay you get it i wasn't watching them but i was like observing but i wanted to say hi i wanted to say something but tell me my why my brain was just like no 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 like you, you can't say hi now you uh i was like, okay what what do i start the conversation with uh should i say hi should i say like oh how old are you like i was just so i was stressing myself out and i was sitting there i feel like maybe like 30 minutes went by before i actually said something because i was like oh okay um i'll say something when she stands up or when they pet their dog or when she when he like high fives his sister then i'll say something like i was just in this terrible cycle of like overthinking and it is something that i did growing up and sometimes I, I still do i'm not gonna lie i still do that sometimes but i've gotten so much better and i think that experience definitely taught me how much i actually like socializing with people so i feel like i'm in extroverted person but i'm also shy am i like an ambivert i don't know how to describe that so i think when you think of socializing you first have to kind of identify like where in the spe spectrum you're on to know navigate how to do that or what you actually want from you know socializing with people so that day in walmart <laughs> when i finally was able to say something it just felt like this huge weight was lifted off my chest and that and that's how i knew that i would never like not never i just knew that i loved connecting with people and that's something that i took to boarding school and um one of my best friends has definitely helped me with that he's such an inspiration when it comes to that because he's just so um free with you know being forward with people for example when i see someone random walking on the path that i may not know it's it's okay to say hello like you meet someone it's okay to be like hi because what's the worst that can happen i don't know you, you might make a new friend or acquaintance and it's definitely helped with faculty i'm i'm so not surprised well i guess i it was a part of me was surprised by how many great faculty or like staff relationships i would make not even my teachers but like people that work in the dining hall people that are building monitors people that are custodians and that keep our campus clean just by saying hello how's your day going i've just built so many connections and i built this like really nice community web and it's just been such an amazing ex experience just seeing how just reaching out to someone can create this great environment create a great human connection and that's something that i uh try to live by even though sometimes i may be shy or overthink a little bit in terms of making friends 
definitely like had some ups and downs like issues with that covid was you know hard covid the height of covid was when i got accepted into phillips exeter academy so my freshman year was the whole covid thing i was remote in the fall then i came halfway through winter term that was a lot to adjust to i didn't really have anyone that i could call a solid friend but I, but trust me as you go on with your boarding school experience whether it's people in your dorm people that you meet on like the paths of boarding school people that you meet in classes clubs dining halls you're gonna make friends like whatever extracurricular you're doing or whoever you're going to have people that you gravitate to or people that gravitate towards you sometimes you have to be willing to make a first move as well take a leap of faith although it is uncomfortable for me sometimes sometimes if you feel like you're okay with doing it if you're in the right mindset to do it don't be shy to um ask someone let's say you were you wanted to eat lunch with your friends but you guys didn't plan lunch but you get to the dining hall and you don't necessarily see anyone that you really are friends friends with so don't be afraid to be like see people that you might know but you're not friends with and be like oh hey can i sit with you guys because nine times out of ten they're not gonna be like no you can't sit here they're gonna be like yeah sure you can sit with us it's fine if you don't like that interaction you've learned from that interaction but who knows you could end up actually having a good time having a good meal with people and it, it some you just sometimes it's not as bad as we think it might turn out definitely be patient with the whole friend making thing and remember to value yourself and know what you're worth while making friends don't think about what do they think of me but just try your best to be yourself you also have to know who you are to be yourself so know who you are try your best to be yourself and the right people are going to come your way what's your daily motto i don't think i have like a daily motto that i wake up and say oh yes this is i say this every single day but i when i can in the mornings i do have a roommate and I currently, um, I lost my AirPods and Bruh. I'm trying to figure out how to, I have like new headphones, but they don't really kind of work. I'm trying to figure out how they work. But anyways, that's besides the point. But some mornings, um, whether it's like in the bathroom while I'm getting ready or in my room, I can put on some worship music or I can look at a Bible verse to set my day off right or just pray. Like whenever I pray in the morning, ooh, that just, it just, it sets my day like, with so much it just as a christian you know teenager it just is very helpful to the mood of my day and it just makes me feel grounded also speaking positive words to yourself songs that remind you that you are a bad b listen to those songs check my names baby how you feeling it's really good to positively affirm yourself because there are a bunch of opportunities for you to compare yourself to people for you to feel like you're not good enough and make sure you have more of you reminding yourself that there's no need to compare the beauty of a sunset to the beauty of a flower you know what i mean that sounds a little cheesy but just speak positivity into your life um and affirm yourself you know and surround yourself with people that don't make you question your value oh yeah and how i approach every day is i've gotten much better at and more aware of my mental health and how to take care of myself so definitely find ways to do that at boarding school because it's kind of like you're uprooted from the support system that you've had at home. You're gonna find a whole new community, but it's important to like be extra, you know, aware of your mental health because you are away from your natural habitat, your natural environment. And, you know, I just take it one day at a time. Something I've had to learn is to accept whatever I'm feeling at whatever time of the day. A part of myself struggled with, I would feel guilty when I would have any emotions that were not positive and instead of thinking how can i convince myself to be happy it's okay to just let yourself feel whatever you're feeling for the moment maybe think about why am i feeling this way just take a moment to breathe relax a few deep breaths and take it day by day you know don't dwell in those negative emotions but don't dismiss them how to avoid procrastination okay there's no human on this earth that is not procrastinated i procrastinate as well um so sorry i can't help you with that just kidding no no i'll try to give you advice i've definitely gotten so much better over the years boarding school definitely like toughens you out when it comes to procrastination i also was um, fortunate enough to go through the program white foundation as i trans transitioned into boarding school and 
it kind of gave me a feel for you know having a heavier workload and it just made me a bit more independent you feel me um avoid procrastination okay um i guess see i'm not the type of person that likes to write things down because i have this thing where like i like to do everything in my head where especially when it comes to you know dates and stuff but when you have to definitely write things down or definitely like put things in your reminder or schedule because i also can be forgetful so i don't know why my brain does that like i think it's a like a fun challenge for my brain where i see oh how much can i remember without like messing up or something so probably don't do that because i tend to forget things a lot i have learned to not procrastinate from the negative effects of procrastination i guess do not procrastinate for your future self so your future self can thank you for example i'm on break spring break right now procrastinating when it comes to washing the dishes that used to be my thing like i was the expert at that i don't really do that anymore because it's just like why not do it in the moment so i don't have to worry about it, it later and that mindset kind of helps you know carry into homework and stuff and sometimes it's best to do the hardest thing because if you know you're gonna take longer at it just get it done with right now so your future self can thank you later y'all I actually almost forgot to do an outro. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize. Like guys, I sincerely like apologize for not being consistent on YouTube. Like I actually want to be consistent. And I know that like, I've had some growth lately, which I'm happy about. And I definitely know that it would be faster growth and more growth if I was consistent on YouTube. But you know, at the end of the day, my education has to come first and a lot of times i gotta put me first lucius i gotta put me first i hope you found this video you know helpful yeah like comment share subscribe bye